Art Journal Tip, well, sort of, Part 3, Reusing Residual Ink on a Tablecloth that was previously used as a stencil. In Part 3 of my series of reusing residual inks in a tablecloth, I am reviewing Parts 2 and 1 and showing you the background papers as they are a day or two after experimenting with them. Then I try out a technique suggested by Scrappity Doodah. Thank you, Scrappity Doodah. And that is to transfer the residual ink from the front and the back of the tablecloth stencil to two papers at one time. It worked so well that I have enough ink to transfer ink to the front and back of both sheets of paper. This is a really fun technique to use up water based ink and to get the very most from your art journal supplies. Hi there. This is part three of a series of videos that I'm doing where I am working on getting all the residual ink out of an old tablecloth that I used as a stencil on my page. In the first video, if you look at it, I um, put the page down on a piece of paper and wet the back of the tablecloth and um, used a paper towel to try to transfer that ink off of the tablecloth onto the page. That was not working well as I was doing it, so I actually unscrewed the top of the tablecloth and just poured water onto that page. And that did get ink off of the cloth onto the page, but I wasn't getting the design that I wanted, so I used white linen, uh, Dilution's white linen, to spray on that. And at the end of the video of part one, I actually had a nice design. But I woke up the next day and checked the page, and as a result, you'll see this in part two of the video, as a result of that page being so wet, it sucked all that white linen into the paper and it just completely modeled the pretty design that I had on my paper, which was not a bad background, but it really was not exactly what I wanted, was trying to accomplish because I wanted the design of the tablecloth on the page. So then in part two of the video, it was suggested that I use a brayer to transfer my ink. And I did that on a piece of white dry paper and I soaked my tablecloth and then I put it down on the page and then I used the brayer to transfer the ink and that worked much better. So I actually heat set that and this is part three of the video and I'm going to show you the results from part two. The paper towel I did nothing to. I showed you in part two of the video how this was all, this was the towel that I used in part one to transfer the ink from that tablecloth onto the page and it just it turned it black. Well, when it's wet, it shows really dark black and none of these spots were showing. These little, I don't know if they're water spots or what they are, but it formed some sort of a resist on this, on, on this towel to cause spots and it dried much lighter. I like this towel, I'll be using it in a collage. I wanted to show that to you where it is today. And this is the result of my page from part two. It's retained its design very well. I'm happy with that. So I think the trick is wetting the tablecloth, the, the residual ink on the tablecloth, and transferring it on to the dry paper such as this with the brayer. Now I get a little blur in here and that's okay with me because as I was working with it my tablecloth shifted and everything. That's really okay with me because I'll probably use this as a journal page background. My only goal is to get all this ink off of the tablecloth onto paper so that I can use it so that it doesn't go to waste. And I did not put fixative on this yet. If I work on this uh, on a journal page background, which I probably will, I'll probably put it in my box 19 journal. I can still use my paintbrush or any other wet media on this page and blur out this design because it does not have fixative on either one of these. I can still move the ink on this page. It does not have fixative on it yet. 
so part three of the video, what I'm going to experiment with, and this will be my last video in, in this series, what I'm going to do is I have some recollections cardstock paper, and I pulled out a sheet. It's a cream-based paper. Actually, I need two sheets for this. Let's pull it out. Another sheet and set it aside. What I'm going to experiment with is wetting the tablecloth, putting it down over one sheet, and I'll have to thoroughly wet both sides, and then take the other sheet and put it on top and see what I can transfer on to both the top and the bottom of the tablecloth. So I would think that on the back of this tablecloth where I do not have as much ink, because I tend to only spray one side of the tablecloth, I'm going to have more ink living on the top of the threads here than I am here. I would think that on the back I will not have as much ink that my design will be fairly lighter. The other thing to consider is um, when I very first started this experiment, this entire section of the tablecloth was coated with ink from several different projects that I worked on. I had not previously transferred any ink off of this. In part two of the video, I re-inked my tablecloth to some extent, but still, I, and then I used it again. This tablecloth does not have as much residual ink on it as I did when I first started. It will if I keep using it on different projects and not transferring anything. But still, this is a good experiment to try. On the other experiments, I was doing the front and the back of one page. This time, I'm going to try to do two fronts. And if it works, I'll try to do two backs. So let's get started with it. My very first step that I want to do. And I want to mention again, these videos that I'm doing are not tutorial videos. This is not a video where I say, I'm going to show you what I how to do something. This is a video that says, I'm trying to do something. This is These are my experiments. This is what's happening as I'm working on it. If you can learn something out of it, fine. <laughs> but don't take these experiments that I do as gospel truth. Experiment for yourself. Um, um, I just want to make the point that these are not tutorial videos in the sense that they're teaching lessons. That's not the goal of this project and most of my projects. Most of my projects are just process videos as I'm working on something. I like to share what I'm doing with people. Okay, now I'm just going to thoroughly wet this down. I have wax paper on the back of this, so I'm not going to worry about anything. And I'm going to get it really wet. I hung this tablecloth up to dry the day before yesterday, and it's it's been hanging, so there's... It's been air drying, so I'm very comfortable with reusing it. But I want to soak it all up again. And what this does is reactivates all that ink. This is Dilution's ink spray in here. I do not, this is not acrylic ink. These are not alcohol inks. This is all Dilution's ink spray, which is a very movable, you can reactivate it. In fact, uh, Diane Raidsley has videos where she actually puts the, she has these little foam pads, re-inker pads, well not re-inker pads, they're just little foam pads where she sprays her, her ink off in there and she can reactivate that ink later, at a later time. And she, and that, that's similar to this, only I'm using a tablecloth. I'm not using a, anything like a foam pad or anything like that. I'm just using a tablecloth that I used in another project where all this leftover residual ink is living in here, and I want to transfer it onto paper. Now, I think that's pretty wet. I'm going to take my wax paper off. And I'm going to take a paper towel and dry the surface of my paper, of my wax paper here, just to get it somewhat dry. I'm going to put, maybe I'll flip it over too. Put a page down. 
Now, I don't know which is up and which is down here, so I'm just going to put it down on the paper. Like that. I'm not going to wet the paper. I'm not going to wet the tablecloth anymore. I'm going to take the second pa paper and put it right on top. Like that. And then I'm just going to use my brayer. I'm going to try to hold this steady, but um, my goal here is not to get perfect designs. Uh, my goal is to transfer ink. And something must be transferring because look at what the brayer is picking up from when I run off the edge of the paper. It does pick up ink. Oh, it's working too. Shall I pull it since I peaked? I think it's got enough on it. Let's look and see what the top one looks like. How cool is that? Now, around the edges, I do not have as much because I didn't want my brayer to run out. Let's kind of peek and see what's on the back. Yeah, now, oh, this is nice. This must have been, this one's a little bit lighter. But I think, but look at the texture in that. Isn't that neat? It's picking up the table, the texture of the tablecloth rather than blurring it with so much ink. Let's flip it over. Let's before we flip it over, let's re-ink our re re. Uh, let's wet our tablecloth down again with water. Let's see if we can get as much as possible out of here. I'm gonna do it off of the wax paper. I just didn't want to get too much wet on the front of my designs here. Let's see if I can do it again in the same session. And I don't know whether I have the ink side, the darker ink down on this one or this one. Now this one, I think I'm going to have to put a, a cloth over to keep my... I don't want to smudge my design with my brayer, with anything that's on my brayer, or gets on my brayer. Anything that gets on my brayer, I want to go on this towel, <laughs> not on my design. But we're just going to try to do something on the back of each one of these as long as I... See, it's getting something on the towel. I can work out to the edge of these as much as possible this time. Part of the problem is here, I don't know where the edge of the paper is. I can guess. I know where the side edges are pretty good. And I can know where the bottom edges, top edge, I kind of lose it. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's working. Look at that. A little bit lighter design in here. I didn't get that so much. Let's see if I can just kind of... Now we'll do that separately. So look, both sides. My paper is curling because this is cardstock. Oh yeah, this is nice. Oh, I like this. Now I've blurred this a little, but I think my wax paper was wet. But I don't mind it being a little blurry. I don't mind that a uh, at all. I'm liking that. Let's let's do a little, just a little here. That's good enough. Just gives gives it a little. Uh, I don't think I want to mess with it anymore. This one maybe. Let's try to put this little flower off on there. So I. Looking at this, I probably have way enough ink on here to do more. It'll get lighter and lighter as I use it. But I'm going to hang this up to dry. This was all I wanted to experiment with today. I'll do a quick heat set on these pages. are not terribly wet. 
they're pretty dry, they're wet, they're damp because you can tell they've curled. Like if you were working on a tag. This is just cardstock paper. This is nothing. This paper is not mixed media paper. But if you want to use, let's put these out here as the final say so. All of this ink. Well, most of this ink, the greater majority of this ink, I did re-ink this page on day two, on part two. But most of this ink that you see here from this project on these pages were, was from leftover residual ink in my tablecloth. I, I, uh, this is just all leftover ink. Why waste it? Um, if you're into doing this type of thing, I mean, sure, you don't have to. It's not a rule. <laughs> it's not a sin if you don't. <laughs> or I don't think it's a sin. But uh, it's a good way to use up your product that you go to the store and pay so much money for. Use it in every which way possible. So I hope that you've enjoyed watching this video. If you have, please subscribe to my channel. And I will see you on the next page.